supplies, so I'm trying to reuse this old ferrule and insert. I've, I've done this trick in the past and it worked. That don't mean it'll work this time, but we're gonna try it. Gotta go get my pliers. holding up right now so if that's the only repair we got to make today and it was as simple as that we'll be doing all right this looks like it could be a long day long slow day lots of waiting i cannot say what a blessing the second truck has been to us on keeping this operation moving we're used to the combine done a lot of sitting Driver went into the office, sir. He must be going to pick up his check. I got my first check the other day, and <clears throat> let me tell you, it's nice to have some money coming in and not going out. Back to the channel, guys. It is uh, Wednesday, September the 27th. What well, we hope is maybe the last day of corn harvest, but more than likely the second to last day of corn harvest. Uh, we're over here in uh, the, uh, the farm that we've been looking for 300 bushel corn, uh, like about 10 acres here. Then we got to move back to Dyer and uh, got seven acres on Dillon's farm. The shell and we will be done with 2023 corn harvest early results corn is a lot better than last year for sure um, it's about one o'clock we're just getting started as you can see we got the gold green hornet back the uh, baby blue let me down last night we just uh, got them all full and was bringing them in and uh, I heard something pop, and I thought it was a tire. Well, I stopped and get out, and there was just antifreeze and cooling all over the road. And uh, come to find out that um, the engine fan is made of fiberglass, and apparently it got old and brittle, and it broke off one of them fans, uh, fan, and sent it through the radiator. So. Um, we ended up having a hillbilly rig uh, the headlight back into the Sterling 
and uh, we swap trailers. Luckily, we was a half a mile from the shop when it happened, so we was able to limp her up to the shop. This was about 8.30 last night, but uh, this morning we uh, uh, swapped the trailers, got the old Green Hornet back, um, hillbilly rigged a, the headlight in there, and we are out here shelling corn right now. Uh, there's a little bit here on the grain cart, and uh, each round from here back is an acre, so we're having to unload every round. We like from here to the fence line, and then there's a little two acre spot back up there by the road that we didn't get. But yeah, we're winding down. My, my vote is when we get done shelling corn that we uh, take Saturday off, whether that happens or not. We'll see. Here's our uh, hillbilly rigging job. You can see we use some uh, some sheet metal screw or tin screws to kind of screw it back in there. And, uh, yeah, you can see them bolts up in there, and we made a little bracket. We're well, gonna wait and do it right, and we still are. We just needed something to uh, give us some light, and that way a state trooper don't see it. So we're trying to be law-abiding citizens. That's why we quit driving it, because we didn't want a trooper to stop us for no light. But we put it back in there, so we got a light in there now. And we have been driving the pee out of these trucks. Um, we've been hauling this farm, uh, which is in Frog Jump, all the way to Mason Hall, which is about 45 minutes from here to Mason Hall. But... We can drive there and back to Mason Hall quicker than we can drive from here to Dyer. The line at Dyer has been terrible. Uh, this morning there was about seven trucks in there this morning. Um, and it was about 10.30 when we got in there. Just, I guess everybody decided to start shelling corn and everybody comes in there all at the same time. So that much makes it worse. But, um, yeah, so uh, from the time I leave here and get to Mason Hall and get unloaded, it's an hour and 45 minutes, which ain't that bad. Most time at Mason Hall, um, I can pull right onto the scale, ain't no one there. And uh, normally there's about one person on the pit in front of you. But, um, yeah, you, they get you in and out pretty quick. Uh, the reason we don't... Um, take more crop to them is because they normally pay a little less than Tyson and then Tyson is right there in our back door I mean it's literally a couple of miles from every farm that we have and we would have to drive past it to get to Mason Hall but if you can get unloaded I guess that's one thing but um right now there's a five cents uh difference between Mason Hall and Tyson and Dylan said he's not sitting in line for an hour, hour and a half for five cents. So we are um, fixing to hop on the grain cart here. I can see him. He's uh, got about, it's already covered the window and he's still got a, still got a ways to go. It's making good corn. Is it 300 bushels? No. Is this farm gonna break its highest average ever? Possibly. So. There's some truth to what the crop critic is saying, but uh, we just haven't seen that 300 bushels yet. But I'm fixing to hop in old granny and uh, get to it. For the 3% of my viewers that uh, watch in Spanish, hola. We are in the cornfield here, going to hopefully finish the last of the crop critic corn today. The little, uh, we can get loaded up here. Robert said, Robert was running the combine last night. And he said this corn right through here was running extra, extraordinarily good. So that's a good problem to have. We got my professional videographer over there getting us some cool shots. I have not seen 
super high numbers. You know, I've seen some 260s out here. About the highest I've seen. But one thing I have since seen is consistency. It is consistent. It is pretty well consistent. Lay about 210 to 211. <clears throat> all the way down this field from one end to the other. instead of my big uh, water jug and I like it a lot. It's a lot uh, easier to transport. I just I just wish it was a hair bigger. People that normally watch the channel know that I normally uh, I normally run the combine while dealing trucks, but yesterday or the day before, this is about our third day out here, third full day. Um, the first day, you know, we tried that, and uh, he was having a hard time keeping up. So yesterday, I made the suggestion, well, why don't I shell and fill my truck up, and then you can get on it and uh, 
shell your truck full. So that's what we did. So I would run it and shell my truck full, which I was driving a blue truck. I'd get on it and take it to town, and then he would hop on the combine and shell the gray truck full, and then hop on it. And when I got back from Mason Hall, I'd get back on it. And we did like that, that uh, yesterday, and it worked pretty good. Um, you know, it's not as efficient as having the combine, you know, constantly moving, but we did shell quite a bit of corn doing it that way, you know. The most the combine sat still was 30 minutes at the most um, doing it like that, you know, as compared to, you know, before I would be probably having to sit for an hour, hour and a half, you know, waiting on him. And then he was already behind because I'd have the combine and the grain cart and a truck full, you know. So we didn't even run the grain cart yesterday except for, you know, a few loads early in the morning and a few uh, bins late at night, you know, when we was first getting everything shelled and filled and then getting, um, then trying to get everything filled at night. Uh, Dillon's farm is seven acres, but it's going to go into the bin. We're going to use it to... Uh, grind for hog feed so we still got to get it cleaned out uh, we'll probably do that tomorrow morning finish uh, cleaning it out scraping it out and then uh, you know maybe tomorrow we'll get it get the auger set up and get it uh, get it get it filled up so uh, I'm sure we'll bring y'all along for that that's done turn fall but it's done turn back summertime uh, I think it's 89 one day, probably close to 90 today. Uh, we had about one week of fall the last week of summer, and uh, now it's the first week of fall, and uh, it's time to turn back summertime again. So, pretty warm, pretty warm. This, uh, the, this little spot right here that he was shelling, uh, shelling through right now stays pretty wet. And um, I was shelling up alongside the fence row yesterday afternoon. And I never seen it drop below 220, so it's uh, was some pretty good gum good corn, and there was some good corn over there, but not. It, I seen it get 170s in the 180s, but this spot right in here where we're at right now, sure enough, was making corn. One thing about making good corn is a lot of unloads. And a lot of trucking and a lot of sitting. We're having to haul this corn 28 miles. We normally, where we normally haul to is just right over there on the other side of the fence road, but they're backed out plumb to the, I think they've been getting like, If I'm not wrong, I think they've been getting like 300 trucks in before lunch. I could be wrong. And uh, of course some of that crowd is bled over to the elevator we use in Dyer. <clears throat> so we got a long line there. So we're trucking this 28 miles to Mason Hall Grain. Turnaround is a lot, lot faster. It's a 45 minute drive, but you pull on the pit dump and you're gone. So we'd rather spend our time driving than sitting and waiting in line for the same money. And my old gray truck ain't got no air conditioner in it. At least moving down the road, you got some air. <coughs> I've shelled some of the best corn for it to be little old short stuff I believe I've ever seen. And it takes forever to unload because I mean it's it's pumping it's pumping it in there just as fast as the gun back and auger it off. That's no joke. It takes forever to unload.
Well, we like them uh, old short rows there. It'll be this, uh, be that area of the field right there. Filling in that square. <clears throat> Seven acres is all we like. Pack of tires, folks. Wrap on crop critic 23. They said that was a wrap on crop critic 2023. That's quite a good event, folks. It's still pretty good going. All right, we'll get this uh, loaded onto the truck, take them off. Hopefully, Chelsea or someone can run us back over here and we'll move back to the tire. Taking old big trucks out of the field out of this field for the last time of the year. I've lost track of how many uh, trucks we took off. We got the Sterling back in operation. Old blue truck decided to throw a fan blade through the radiator. We got the headlight mojoed in here. It's not operational, but that's kind of the kind of throw the DOT off our scent there. Maybe if a trooper sees us, they won't pull us over. You barreling down the highway with that uh, headlight missing, throws up red flags. I had that truck looking so good. You can see the reflection of the gray truck in the paint. Had it buffed, had it washed up. That tire blew out and knocked my darn headlight out. I do got the rubber piece that goes right here. I don't know what I'm going to do about this part right here. I guess just go with it. I'll try to bond all this up and sand it down. See if I can find some of this ABF green. Sand it down and paint it back. Same thing for this. Can't have nothing nice. Probably going to be in the neighborhood of... Uh, 12, 1500 bushel on both the trucks. Down to seven acres, seven acres left at home. 